This video is proudly sponsored by Exa, the world's largest smart wallet brand. As we proceed with the video, we shall tell you more about this amazing brand. Everything you need to know about Julius Nyerere Power Station in Tanzania. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displo, and thanks for watching. In this video, we shall bring you everything you need to know about the Julius Nyerere Power Station in Tanzania. The Julius Nyerere Hydro Power Station, also called Rufiji Hydroelectric Power Station, is a 2,115 megawatts hydroelectric dam under construction in Tanzania, expected to produce 5,920 gigawatts hour of power annually upon completion. The government of Tanzania has been considering establishing this power station since the 1960s, and when fully developed, it will be the largest power station in East Africa. The 134 meters arced concrete dam is expected to create a 100 km reservoir lake in length, measuring 1,200 km square, with 34 billion cubic meters of water. This East African masterpiece is not only going to change the face of the region, but also the socio-economic life of the people. But first, let us look at the origin of this nation-changing project. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. In 1901, German engineer Stiegler led the first expedition to what is now known as Stiegler's Gorge to consider potential infrastructure. Stiegler, when measuring the gorge, was charged by an elephant and fell into the ravine. It was named after him in his memory. Plans for a dam were developed during British rule of Tanganyika. Alexander Telford conducted the first systemic development surveys of the Rufiji in 1928 to 1929, with engineer C. Gilman carrying out further studies in 1938 to 1940. These studies primarily envisioned irrigation infrastructure with a small dam at Stiegas Gorge to reduce flooding and protect downstream irrigation infrastructure. This changed in the 1950s when the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO started studying Rufiji River infrastructure. This included a far larger dam wall of around 100 meters that aimed to transform the valley to an artificial environment, providing water from agriculture. Plants turned towards hydropower after Tangaika's independence in 1961. The Japanese External Trade Organization supported feasibility studies in the 1960s that proposed a 620 milliwatt plant. At the same time, Nyerere's government engaged U.S. authorities and in particular the Bureau of Reclamation and Tennessee Valley Authority. This produced studies planning wide transformation of the Rufiji Valley with the dam enabling irrigation, industrialization, urban water supply and a larger fishery in its reservoir. The U.S. studies also initiated the creation of the Rufiji Basin Development Authority, Rubada, whose founding mission was to build the dam and facilitate the wider development of the valley. By the 1970s, the Norwegian NORAD Development Agency had taken on Stiegas Gorge planning, producing detailed feasibility and construction designs. However, these plans were never implemented, primarily because of the World Bank's decision to reject project finance. There were also growing environmental concerns around the project, prompting the first environmental impact assessment in Tanzania. These concerns were magnified by the designation of the Selos Game Reserve, in which the gorge sits as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1982. The World Bank and other international donors consequently turned to the smaller and less impactful Kidatu and Pangani Falls dams in the 1990s. However, Kikweta's government resurrected plans for the dam in 2006 because of severe power crisis in Tanzania from 2004 to 2006 that saw widespread load shedding. A series of companies expressed interest in developing the project. Under Kikweta's government, and like other energy sector projects, the dam was supposed to be developed by the private sector. This involved unsolicited bids by private companies for agreements with the government to build the project. The companies would then use these deals such as power purchase agreements to raise finance and start construction. However, the main engagement came from Brazil after a number of exchanges between the two countries happened between 2009 and 2012. They signed a memorandum of understanding with Rubada in 2012 to build the dam. Odebrecht got the contract and undertook feasibility and design studies and commissioned an environmental impact report. However, Tanzanian interest in the dam appeared to stall by 2014, delaying any form of implementation. 
This changed when President Magufuli came to power in 2015. In 2017, he announced that the Stegos Gorge Dam would be a flagship development project of his government and would be financed by the government rather than developed by the private sector. At first, a round of bidding for the construction tenders was held in the autumn of 2017. This was, however, unsuccessful, initiating a second round in the spring of 2018 when Arab contractors and El Swedi, both Egyptian firms, won the bid. Hello, explorers. Remember we said at the beginning that this video is sponsored by Exter. Exter is an ultra-slim trackable smart wallet that can hold up to 9 cards and along with some cash, you can easily access your cards with just a push of a button. This wallet comes with a slim solar power tracker which fits so perfectly in the wallet and can be connected to your phone so you have no worries about losing your wallet because it can easily be traced with the help of the smart tracker. This wallet comes in 9 different colors. Dear Disperers, we highly recommend this wallet, which is why, if you use our discount code which is linked in the description of this video to purchase this super sleek wallet, you get a 20% discount. So Disperers, what are you waiting for? After the August 2017 bid, the selected contractor was expected to complete the dam in no more than 36 months. In December of 2018, the Citizen, a Tanzania newspaper, reported that the government of Tanzania had awarded the construction contract for this power project to Arab Contractors Limited of Egypt, at a budgeted cost of $2.9 billion. Shortly before this, the World Heritage Committee reiterated its grave concern about Tanzania's decision to move forward on the project and added it to the grounds of the Silos Game Reserve to be on the list of World Heritage Sites in danger which was previously concerned with elephant poaching. In February of 2019, the government of Tanzania handed over the construction site to the consortium comprising Arab contractors and El Suwedi, both of Egypt, who had been selected to build the power station. Allowing six months to mobilize equipment, actual construction was expected to start in the third quarter of the calendar year 2019. In April 2019, the Tanzanian government made an upfront payment of $309.645 million, representing approximately 15% total cost of construction, and by June 2020, the project was 40% complete. In July 2019, the East African newspaper, quoting British Broadcasting Corporation, reported that the construction of the power station had begun. The dam will be fourth largest in Africa and ninth largest in the world. In 2018, a new design for Stegas Gorge, 131 meters high and 700 meters dam wall was unveiled. Installed capacity has been reported to be between 1,366.60 megawatts and 1,602 megawatts. The Stegas Gorge hydropower project will therefore significantly increase the installed capacity on grid in Tanzania, supporting power for industrialization and electrification. The government has publicly stated that the dam will be financed by Tanzania's national budget, yet no funding package was announced and the World Bank and other financiers rejecting support for the dam. El Swedi has secured a loan of $500 million from the African Export-Import Bank, with guarantees from the United Bank for Africa and CRDB Bank, which they plan to repay through the project contract. When Audi Brech rewrote feasibility and design studies for the dam in 2013, they estimated that it would cost $4.7 billion. The government used this figure in announcing the new design and feasibility study in 2018. However, Hartman claims that the underlying costs have changed in the price of concrete and construction costs and in engineering services. Using contemporary dam cases, he suggested that after excluding social environmental mitigation, the current cost estimation should be around $7.57 billion rising to $9.8 billion if a conservative amount of overrun is factored in. And still, Tanzania has not announced any funding agreements for the dam's construction. This financial situation could delay or stop payments to the contractors, which would harm or derail construction. Additional risks come from the choice of the two contractors. According to their public profiles, Dai claims that their company has had experience of dam construction and rather primarily builds commercial and residential buildings and transmission lines. Arab contractors reportedly worked on Aswam Dam in the 1960s, but would only have been on one of many subcontractors on the Russian-led project. A review of their website reveals that the company has been involved in the construction of buildings over the last decade, not on any large hydraulic or power generation projects. Meanwhile, El Swedi appears mainly to have built transmission lines, not complex electromechanical systems. This lack of experience is notable given the size of Tigers Gorge Dam and the degree of hydrological flux in the Rufiji River. 
there has not been a supervising owner's engineers appointed to ensure the quality of construction. There would also be a project management issue in undertaking infrastructure on this scale of recruitment, which is estimated at 4,000 plus personnel and a number of subcontractors. Neither company appears to have experience of management on this scale. In its most extreme sense, this raises questions about the dam safety, both in the construction phases and in the end of the product. Another risk concerns environmental and social impacts given inexperience. The companies are unlikely to be familiar with mitigation codes of practice that could limit impacts like stopping dumping of soil in the river or in handling waste. There are a number of risks to the effective functioning of the Stigas Gorge hydropower project if it is completed, such as climate change. It is unclear if the total rainfall in Tanzania will increase or decrease, but studies suggest that precipitation's variability will increase. This is important as it will affect hydropower production, decreasing the dam's electricity generation reliability. This is also a particularly important context of the hydro dependency. A failure in these dams in the dry season is a key reason for the country's power failures, which happened frequently. This vulnerability will increase if the Stigas Gorge Dam is completed. The other risks come from the sedimentation as the report highlighted the vulnerability of the reservoir to rapid sedimentation. This is because of the existing sediment load in the Rufiji River and the high levels of erosion likely to occur around the reservoir. Higher sedimentation would decrease the reservoir's capacity to store water. Such a reduction would reduce the reliability of the reservoir as it would make it more directly dependent on precipitation. Another fiscal danger comes from the ability of Tanzania's electricity utility, Tanesco, to sell the hydropower plant energy. Given Tanzania's current peak capacity of around 1.05 gigawatts and installed capacity of 1.5 gigawatts, there are persistent doubts about whether Tanzania can actually sell the dam's energy. A number of reports cast doubt on the ability of the Tanzanian economy and electrification schemes to absorb the dam's demand. Without such sales to neighboring countries, the government will not easily recoup their investment. Impacts on the environment will have important socio-economic effects as the river's annual irrigating and fertilizing flood creates a rich area of farmland below the park. Typically, this supports recession agriculture that takes place in the dry season. Indeed, the Rufiji Valley contains some of Tanzania's richest farmlands, including extensive paddy fields. People living in the valley also utilize lakes which are replenishing by annual floods. This area is Tanzania's economically richest fishery centered on prawns. Prawns and all the fish numbers are underpinned by the river's wet season poles. Building the Stegas Gorge Dam will therefore harm fisheries around the Rufiji Delta. Another direct impact of the dam will be on tourism which will be twofold. The main photo tourist area of the Silos is the part of the reserve immediate below the gorge. The remainder of the park is for hunting tourism and will be negatively affected by construction. The building of the dam will bring a visual impact of this area because of the improved roads and large number of vehicles transporting materials to the dam. Despite these various concerns, academic and consultants have established that the significant level of environmental and social effects constitute an important straight earth in pursuing Stegas Gorge Dam. Hence, the project is moving on despite all odds and its benefits are at the forefront of the government's determination. There you have it, explorers. That was everything you needed to know about Julius Nyerere Power Station in Tanzania. Thanks for watching this video and if you did enjoy the video, do well to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends 